Uh, this is the uh, March 18th special meeting of the Committee on City Services. Uh, I am City Councilor Stan Moulton, Chair of the Committee, and will be presiding. Uh, we have with us today uh, John Fry, who is uh, going to clerk this meeting. Uh, John, if you would uh, call the roll, please. Sure. Uh, Councilor Dubs. Here. Councilor Rothenberg. Here. Councilor LaBarge. Here. Councilor Moulton. Here. Okay, all present. Thank you. Uh, this meeting uh, is being audio and video recorded. Uh, is there anyone uh, who is here to offer any public comment? I see no one in the waiting room. No. So there is nobody here for public comment. Uh, we have no minutes. Uh, the minutes for our last meeting, March 4th, are not yet ready. So we have two items on the agenda today, two, uh, re uh, no, two appointments, new appointments, one to the Human Rights Commission, uh, Jamila Gore, and I believe, Councillor Dubs, that you talked with uh, Jamila. That is correct. Yes, um, I, met up with, I met up with Jamila last week for coffee, um, and we had a great conversation about um, her thoughts about the Human Rights Commission, about her experience. Um, so as it says on her application, she's been living in uh, Northampton for 17 years. And as you all know that she was counselor at large for a two-year term where she was on the Transportation and Parking Commission, the City Services Committee, the Committee to Study Barriers to uh, serving on the commission, to serving on commissions and committees. And she's also the first black woman on the Northampton City Council. Um, also, while she was city councilor, she worked on a resolution with Councillor Garrick Perry, which led to the um, the creation of the committee to investigate racialized harm. Um, Jamila is uh, she feels that the Human Rights Commission is a is an exciting new endeavor for the city, and um, she feels like that it could be defined more in terms of what um, the what the uh, Human Rights Commission can do for the city to help and to, um, she believes that um, the Human Rights Commission, the, mi the mission of the commission should should be made very clear um, so that people know what the purpose of it is. And um, she, um, Jamila says that she's excited to see what happens with it. And um, she feels that her firsthand knowledge of how the city operates will help to make the Human Rights Commission an asset to the governing bodies at the city by advising on how to investigate, um, promote and protect human rights in the city. Um, one potential conflict um, that Jamila mentioned is that she currently has, ha she currently works on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. when the when the Human Rights Commission is scheduled to meet. And so she's, she basically was asking if there's any way to work on that or to change that, the schedule of that perhaps in order to get her on the commission. So that could be a potential conflict. Um, I don't think it's a guaranteed conflict, but something something that we would want to uh, talk to her about more. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Appreciate that report. Any uh, any questions about uh, former Councilor Gore's candidacy for Councilor Dubs or any comments? Yes, I do. Councilor Labarge. Yeah. Jeremy, I had talked with um, with Jamila. I'm very, very close with her, and she mentioned that to me. And I told her she should really call the chair of the Human Rights Commission and talk with that person to see if it was possible of changing that time. If not, talk to where she's working to see if they would bring her hours up so she could leave earlier to attend the meeting. So I thought I'd let you know that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barge. Uh, is that a hand, Councillor yes. Rothenberg? I, I have trouble because your your view is very narrow. So <laughs> wave, wave your hand in front of your face, please. Okay. I just wanted to say, I think I'm just delighted that Jamila was an applicant for this and was put forward. Um, I suppose we could still call her Councillor Gore, former, former Councillor Gore. I just think she's a person of such integrity and she served our city with such integrity. And I really look forward to what she will bring to 
this commission. I, I certainly support her candidacy. Thank you. Yes, I concur. Uh, uh, I know that former Councilor Gore had uh, talked about when she left the council at the end of last year, uh, wanting to serve the city, uh, conti uh, continuing to serve the city. And I think this is a terrific fit for her. And I think she will bring a lot to the Human Rights Commission. In terms of her availability, um, the Human Rights Commission is still one member shy of reaching a, uh, a quorum. So uh, I you know, I think our job is to make a recommendation on her qualifications. I think she's eminently qualified. And it will then be the members of the Human Rights Commission up to them to determine a, a meeting time that's convenient to all. I mean, after all, meeting times are not set in stone. So uh, when the new, newly constituted Human Rights Commission convenes, it will be up to those members to figure out when they can meet regularly at, at a time that's convenient for all. So I would entertain a motion. To make a motion. I'm oh, sorry. Second it. Well, I need a motion for a positive recommendation, I presume. Right. Jeremy, go ahead. I'll make a motion to uh, for a part of positive recommendation. To full city uh, council. And that was a second to uh, Councilor Rothenberg. You seconded. Yes. Okay. So motion made by Councilor Dubs. Seconded by Councillor Rothenberg for a positive recommendation on uh, Jamila Gore. For the discussion, none. Uh, counts, uh, 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 John, if you would call the roll, please. Uh, Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Malton. Yes. Councillor Dubs. Yes. Thank okay, you. so that uh, passes four. To zero, unanimous for a positive recommendation on Jamila Gore to the Human Rights Commission. Second, we have Michael Curtin, candidate for appointment to the Historical Commission. And I believe, Councillor Rothenberg, you talked to uh, Mr. Curtin. Yes, I did. So my first question for him was about uh, his path to applying. And what he told me was that he is the head of building and grounds at his condo. Uh, which is a 25 acre uh, parcel, half of which is conservation land. And so through that, he had taken an interest in stormwater management and attending conservation commission meetings and had applied there initially, but there were no openings. And he had put the historical commission as his second choice, which is incredibly lucky for us, I would say, because he really is a historian by trade. And I think he brings so much um, potentially to this commission if, if he were to be appointed. Um, he was faculty at three different public universities. And so he has a great deal of experience in faculty governance, uh, overseeing things like personnel matters, curriculum, grounds management, compensation. But furthermore, he ran three global studies centers and did fantastic fundraising and grant funding as the director of those centers. One of them, the University of Wisconsin, raised about $2 million a year in federal grant funds. Another one, the Carsey Wolf Center at UC Santa Barbara, raised about $12 million annually. And he was in charge of programming, research, publishing, conferences, media engagement, really the chief administrator directing the vision of those, those centers. And we were just lucky that he chose to retire in Northampton. Um, he loves mill towns and really he spent the first two years of his undergraduate studies or maybe the latter two, he spent two years of his undergraduate studies researching 19th century mill towns. Um, and he still avidly reads about them to this day. So, you know, we had a fascinating discussion where he was teaching me about the young women who came to work here and the ways in which they would go on strike and then the next wave of workers being sort of immigrant families and the, the way that the mills became much bigger because we switched to turbine power and on and on and on. I mean, he's just a wealth of knowledge about mill towns. Um, and we had a very interesting discussion, mostly I just listened, where he was telling me about ways in which he thinks we could work to preserve these historic buildings that are our assets and what the future of that might look like for us um, in terms of possibly more public-private partnerships, maybe handing off some of these buildings to be turned into housing, but in a really thoughtful way, 
um, especially some of our churches, maybe not our own assets, but but landmarks of our city. Um, you know, for example, there was just a recent issue with the St. John Cantius Church, and there were some citizens who were concerned about the fact that a cupola had been taken off the back and they said, oh, this is an integral feature of our of this church and we gave you $500,000, Mr. Developer, we really want you to put that back and I think the city is giving them five years to do so. But Mr. Curtin interestingly said, you know, if you travel to all the churches in this area, you'll see they share this feature, this feature, this feature, but the cupola is really not a core feature of it. And even in this case, it's in the very back of the church. So, you know, maybe that would be an instance where he will bring some great thought to how we interface with developers who are willing to take the risk to take on some of these buildings and how we can support them, but not overstep them and make sure we don't lose any of the, the real special identity of those buildings. So I just think he's a fantastic fit. And finally, I asked him about his style on committees. He says that he really listens very carefully and thoughtfully to everyone. And if he sees an opportunity where he might be able to shift dialogue in a direction, he'll take it. But if not, you know, he's perfectly happy to just quietly state his concerns and wait for the issue to resurface a couple more times before maybe there's more consensus that this is a direction we might move in. So I think he really emerged from this interview as an extremely calm, intelligent, thoughtful, kind person. And I think he will really help our city succeed and learn how these commissions interface with city government. I look forward to learning from him. If he's on this commission as a city councilor, what can I learn from the historic commission and how can we partner together? So I just cannot recommend him highly enough. And that is my report. Okay, thank you. Very thorough report, I appreciate it. Any uh, further comments, questions? No. Yes, Councilor Labarge. Yeah, I'd make a motion with a positive recommendation for Michael Curtin to be appointed on the Historical Commission to the full City Council. I'll second that. Thank you, Councilor. That was an excellent, excellent interview. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion for a positive recommendation made by Councilor Labarge, seconded by Councilor Dubbs. Any further discussion? Uh, roll call, please, John. Uh, Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Dubbs. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So that passes unanimously four to zero. And I will uh, I will alert uh, Council President Jarrett that both of these recommendations uh, have been uh, passed along to the City Council for inclusion on Thursday's agenda. Okay, so that brings us to uh, new business. Any any new business that anybody wants to uh, put forward? Okay, uh, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. But before before that motion, I just uh, just uh, logistically for councilors Dubs and, and Rothenberg, if you are staying on line for the community resources meeting which is a hybrid meeting you you will this is the link to use so you actually don't have to sign off here this this will turn into the community resources meeting if, if you're going to attend virtually okay it's all all the same link today great thank you okay thank you. you're welcome okay now i'll entertain a motion to adjourn move to adjourn second that Okay, motion made and seconded. Uh, John, roll call, please. Uh, Councilor Moulton. Yes. Councilor Dubbs. Yes. Councilor Rothenberg. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Okay, that passes unanimously. We are adjourned at 445.